morning everyone. Living on the edge, my phone is on very little battery, fortunately I can charge it in the car, so I'm able to make this video otherwise. <laughs> um, I was able to watch the game yesterday, most of it, uh, United against Arsenal, which was really the kind of standout game uh, of these midweek fixtures. And it was a weird game. Absolutely weird game, lots of ebbs and flows. And first of all, I cannot tell you how much I hate those Arsenal jerseys, those lime green. Uh, first of all, I I decided to watch it in bed on my phone, so you know it's not the biggest screen, but and it's still very sharp. <laughs> of course, uh, these days that's not a problem. But this lime green. Even on the smaller screen, it's just blending away with the rest of the with the pitch. In a way, I just don't know. Uh, maybe I get more aware of that now with green jerseys in general. Um, since this, you know, I also follow hockey, as you may know. Uh, there is this uh, website, Hockey by Design, where they critique. is a kind of a graphic designer who critiques the hockey jerseys and everything else, every other aspects of design of hockey, which is basically what I want to do with my blog, uh, with the, yeah, here's hockey, I just felt warm, <laughs> not that I wanted to pull the phone, uh, but what I want to do with my blog, I'm just not a designer, but those lime green jerseys, I'm sorry, uh, I really, really, really dislike them, I cannot express to you how much I dislike them, uh, Maybe the navy ones could have worked if United plays with white pants, but I understand that at home they need to play in the look that uh, they usually don't. Uh, and at the moment they're playing with black pants. And I have to say that uh, this United shirt somehow I like. And you know, in my ever quest to identify jerseys that I would like to have uh, you know that are not necessarily my I'm not a United fan uh, actually for most, most of the time I'm uh, quite the opposite although I have to say uh, a good United is better it's better for football the Champions League same thing uh, you know if, the, if traditional teams and I recognize United ha has a lot of tradition if a traditional team does well even if I don't like it, I'm happy about it. Uh, they don't need to be as dominant, that's then always this edge. But they, I don't like them, you know, teetering, mid-table-ish kind of, it doesn't, it's not that great. But, um, you know, I was looking at United jerseys and for some reason there are not that many great ones that I would say this is now uh, absolute uh, must-have. I always get a little bit stuck on the one that they had for uh, in 2007 to 2008 with the white tape on the, and the devil on the back. That one I think I can, I do somehow like, but other than that, uh, most of them leave me rather cold. I mean, it's weird in a way, but yeah, so and this current one, there is something about it. I know it's non-traditional with uh, so much black, but there's something about it that I like. And I was wondering, does that, that, that have to do that I'm a Milan fan and I want to see red and black? Possibly not. Uh, I gotta be honest like that. But you know, red and black, it's... It looks nice. Okay, the game. Uh, first half, it was not a great game. Uh, United was not in the game, I felt, and Arsenal did did only do as much as they needed to do. Uh, the commentator even made this analogy, a good horse knows how high it has to jump, and doesn't jump any higher. And after this great performance against Tottenham, uh, seemingly Arsenal knew that United, um, if you go all out offense on United, it might turn out dangerous. Uh, you know, Mourinho tactics. I really think that this is the reputation that Mourinho still has, that his teams are kind of um, 
stingy and hard to uh, and you can always get ca a call out on a counter attack so for that reason yeah that might have dominated the tactics but United was not in the, in the game and I gotta say the goal then came after a corner kick horrible defending by United and so I'm in the lane that I wanna be horrible defending by United uh, from the get-go I mean Mustafi was really clear in the box makes a mess of a shot or, or was it a header I think it was a header you know uh, on the ground it bounces back up and the hair what oh, what was he doing he basically uh, he pushes it above himself and it lobs in, into the goal where Ander Herrera wants to save it but it's too late um, by video evidence it was not clear that it was a goal but the goal and technology said and you could then see that yes it was a goal um, about that much but it was all in very 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 weird goal uh, and I thought okay Arsenal is cruising nope United came right back uh, free kick I want to say by Rojo uh, then Arsenal kind of uh, it, it was saved uh, by Lena to the side and everyone I had the feeling that Arsenal were thinking this is going to a corner kick but I think it was under Herrera again might be wrong on that one who got the ball back in play he actually was after at the free kick he was offside by a hair um, I honestly these types of offsides I I I would say it's the same uh, is even with the defender. I really think they should define like in, in um, track and field when they have 100 meter dash that it needs to be the, the torso or something like that. I, I, I would even go as far as to say uh, the feet or something like that, or the hip. Don't If he's leaning forward, uh, to me he's not offside, honestly. I mean, uh, if the feet the main uh, of his body are still with the defender yeah I know it's a hard call but now that we have VAR and we can look at those things I actually would say it needs to be well defined which body part uh, needs to be offside if it's the whole body yeah, okay but I I honestly I don't like that uh, so for me, when I saw the replay, uh, technically yes, he was offside. For me, I didn't see him as offside, and a referee cannot see this. I'm sorry, this is just a near impossibility uh, to make that kind of, kind of call. But yeah, he puts it back, and Martial is having a free go on goal. Uh, it was really that the Arsenal defenders, there were many in the wall, were just running back and didn't and were. Uh, they don't know whether they should chase the ball or they should complete some assignment. It's kind of pandemonium. Martial used exactly that and hammered the ball home. I think it felt like three or four minutes after the goal had gone to Arsenal. Um, and then the game got intense. Uh, not chance wise, but cards wise. I think within five minutes, there were five cards given. Um, most of them were quite well, well deserved. And the game was a little bit in danger of getting control. But I think the ref, uh, it, it was lucky that it was halftime and the ref kind of pulled it back. Coming out of halftime, I felt that Arsenal was sitting way too much back as they gave the initiative to United. Uh, who did not do much, but I felt that suddenly United this spark that they got with uh, after this 1-1 and uh, this kind of intense period uh, actually from that moment on United Popol with a great team performance uh, fighting spirit uh, you know they're not a great team at the moment but at least they were fighting and they have this here and there and then there are other times where you just don't know what's happening it's a very 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 weird team uh, and yeah, it was kind of a stand. It was really a dull game uh, for 20, almost 25 minutes. And uh, Lacazette comes on as he did against Tottenham. 
an Oppo makes a horrible mistake, uh, plays the ball uh, into Lacazette's uh, path more or less. He passes it on, uh, they run towards the box, cross in and then there is Rocco, Lacazette and another United defender all trying to kind of sliding into the ball and either clearing it or putting it into the net. At first it looked like Lacazette put it in but it turned out to be a Rocco on goal. Uh, yeah, really weird. He makes a horrible, horrible mistake and then he finishes it off by scoring the goal. And again you thought, okay, it was just at a moment, just at a moment when you felt that Arsenal is getting a little bit back in, into the game. Uh, they get the goal again. And just a minute later, yes, there was a little bit of an in injury delay, but it felt like seconds later because uh, they didn't show the uh, kickoff. It was a right off kickoff. Um, long ball to Lukaku. That uh, miscommunication the Arsenal defense and Lingard, you know, Leno does not come out. The Arsenal defenders don't come back. The ball is uh, lingering there and Lingard just uh, slots it home. 2 2 again. And then it became a great game. Then uh, Obama Young had two great chances. Uh, one that he should have made, and then finally De Gea is showing why he's considered a great goalkeeper because um, as of late, I don't have a high opinion of him. But yeah, uh, he did uh, quite well. United also tried. The game really for 10 minutes was a really good game. And then it died down again and everyone kind of uh, was happy with the 2-2. Which I don't understand because for me this was a win that United needed. Uh, the 2 2 for Arsenal is m maybe more of a one point than a lost point. However, the other results were not kind of going entirely in Arsenal's favor. Uh, Tottenham wins uh, 3 1 against Southampton, who, as far as I saw, did not have their new coach, Hospital. By the way, uh, let, let me say, it was going crazy on Austrian German media. Uh, Klopp uh, kind of explaining the name Hasen Hüttel to the uh, English reporters. I think he said Hasen Hüttel and he said Hasen Hüttel and then Hase means the rabbit and Hüttel means nothing. No, 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 no. Hüttel is uh, Austrian or Southern German and Hüttel means a uh, little hut. So it's the, his name is little, little, literally the little bunny hut. I came to me that way. So yeah, I think he was not uh, there. Spurs were three 0 up. Uh, I think it was Kane in the first half. Uh, uh, Mura and who was the last one? Son. Yes, I think after 60 minutes it was three 0 and then in stoppage time Southampton pulled one back. So Tottenham wins and yeah, are now two points ahead of uh, of Arsenal. Um, and fortunately for Arsenal. Wolves beat Chelsea. Chelsea was 1-0 up at halftime. Got an early goal as far as so the Wolves turned turn around and they win 2-1. That I thought was the, maybe the most uh, surprising results of yesterday. And that means uh, we have now... Uh, let, let, let's go to Liverpool. Liverpool also wins uh, 3-1 away to Burnley. Um, with the goal scored uh, by Milner, it was nil-nil at halftime. Goal scored by Milner uh, after um, being one nil down. Gotta say that um, Firmino scores a goal and Shakiri puts one in in stoppage time. So it was three-one to Liverpool. Uh, important win for Liverpool because now it's City 41, Liverpool 39. I think it's between those two. I want Liverpool. I'm afraid it will be City. Uh, if I would have to bet, I would put I, I would put my money on City. Um, I just don't see Liverpool. I don't know. To me, it's an 80-20 thing. If I want to put my numbers on it, it's, it's, uh, those are those are I gotta say, but you know, I still keep hoping. I still keep hoping they're hanging in there. Uh, I wish that the front line got going better. So Liverpool third nine, then Spurs <laughs> moving from fifth to third now. 33, Chelsea and Arsenal at 31 in that order. 
Um, other games, Everton Newcastle was a 1 1 that I have here. Um, Fulham Leicester, the Ranieri Derby, the second. <laughs> he first plays uh, against Chelsea, now he plays against Leicester. Ended 1 1, Fulham being 1 0 up. Um, and yeah, I think those were the results from yesterday. Um, Everton still in sixth spot, would be just out of Europe. Bournemouth is moving up uh, ahead of United now, but United and Bournemouth and Everton are all sitting at 23 points, too far as I can see. Uh, Leicester is right in the middle of the table, as are Brighton. Uh, Wells, Watford kind of is falling. They were they were much better at the beginning of the season, so I think that uh, Wolves and um, West Ham is also there. And I think starting starting right above Newcastle, uh, Newcastle is the first team where I, I, I would say is where the relegation battle starts with Newcastle having a probably the best position. Uh, they flip they flip flopped Crystal Palace, Cardiff, Huddersfield. Uh, Southampton, Burnley and Fulham, the last three on nine points, Newcastle 13, 12, 11, 10, so this is really tight uh, down here. So that's the Premier League uh, heading into the weekend where uh, it was, was it City against Chelsea that's going to be played. Uh, I think I'm going to pull out my love for Chelsea in this one again. I really would like to Chelsea to win that one don't quite see it. Uh, France also played, I, I know there was Cop Copa del Rey, but honestly uh, at the moment I'm not following Copa del Rey. Uh, let's get a few teams eliminated and then we'll uh, uh, see what's happening. Uh, France played just some notable results, uh, PSG only managing a 1-1 draw in Strasbourg. Um, two penalties, Strasbourg actually being ahead. Um, 40th minute and then uh, Kavan is loving home one one so PSG dropping points uh, now. Uh, I think for the top teams the big result was that uh, Lyon is losing at home to Rennes 0-2. Uh, I mean, that means that now we have uh, PSG at 44, Lille has 30. Um, Lyon has uh, Montpellier has 29 and Lyon has 28. Um, right behind would be Marseille, but they also got a big loss against Nantes, 3-2. Uh, it was 2-2, Marseille being up twice, uh, Nantes getting a uh, winner in the second half. Uh, that result made me smile a little bit. I mean, Nantes... I like Nantes, let's put it that way. And there is something about them that I always adore and I know they're gonna rebuild the stadium, but the stadium in Nantes is one of the most beautiful in France. And I'm sad that it's gonna be gone soonish. Also, the uh, home of two of the great, uh, two great World Cup matches, uh, the '98 World Cup, uh, Nigeria, Spain, and the qualifying battle between Brazil and Denmark. Uh, that was a great game. That was really a great game. Uh, Brazil being stretched to the very end. Um, what else? I think, yeah, Bordeaux Saint Etienne. That's also interesting because Bordeaux um, got the point also against PSG. Um, 3 2, one, uh, um, was 1 1 at halftime. Bordeaux got a 90th minute winner. So uh, Marseille losing, Saint Etienne losing, it's kind of Lyon losing. So there are a lot of teams on the top are losing. Uh, the top looks PSG 44, Lille 30, Montpellier 29, Lyon 28, Marseille and Saint Etienne 5th and 6th and 26 points. Uh, nice with the win yesterday uh, 25, Nîmes 23 and Strasbourg 22, that's the top 9. Um, I think I saw also the Dijon one, uh, which means that Monaco is back in the relegation zone. Well, that's my roundup for yesterday, mainly the Arsenal United. I didn't see any highlights of the other games. I just noted the results, uh, which were quite interesting, to be honest with you. Uh, especially in France, that's the big winner was Lille uh, this round. I mean, everything else was kind of uh, going slow. Um, yep. 
that's how it often how it, how it often goes and uh, if there wasn't PSG I think we would have a real title race in uh, France anyway let, let me know what you thought if you saw the same game as I let me know if you felt the same about it it was not a great game until uh, it was already 2-2 uh, United actually earned this draw against Arsenal, Arsenal. and let, let me know how the other games uh, were how like the, if the Chelsea defeat was uh, deserved uh, yeah Chelsea just, just, just lost and now they have to play City. Maybe they can bounce back. Maybe. Just maybe. But I think there's now. Uh, it keeps a little bit catching up. But Chelsea is not that, that super team that it seemed a month ago. Yeah. Kind of knew that. Okay. Let me know what you thought in the comments below about the game. Any other game that you watched of the ones that I mentioned here. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Um, and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe. I will talk to you soon. Bye.